Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be talking about isolates and dependency injection and how we can use these two concepts inside of Flutter. Many of you who are not familiar with the Dart programming language are probably not familiar with the term isolate. Isolates are Dart's version of threads or actors. They are based on the Erlang or Elixir actor model and they are essentially just isolated processes that do not share memory between one another. So when you run an application in Dart or when you spin up your Flutter application, typically it's running on one or more isolates. And just like with actors in Elixir or Erlang, you send messages from one isolate to the other, and this allows you to send data back and forth between the two. And you do this by way of what are called ports, so what is dependency injection? Well, dependency injection is a software pattern that allows you to basically create dependencies which can be passed to objects from an external source rather than from an internal source. And this has its advantages because it allows us to easily swap dependencies and it's obviously very useful for changing very small elements of the program. For instance, if you have a view that requires a certain data object that has a specific shape, you can pass that data object to the view, or you could just change the data object for something that looks similar and then pass it to the view. In Flutter, we often use dependency injection to allow us to separate mock and production data sources. And in fact, that's what we will be using this for in today's program. The pattern inside of Dart tends to make use of a singleton object with a factory constructor. Also, there are a few dependency injection packages that exist inside of the Dart ecosystem, which can give you a bit more power in your dependency injection. All right, so now let's get into the code. We're going to be building out a simple grid view that pulls images from a API and then it just loads these images into the grid view and we can scroll up and down the grid view. Currently in our code, we've got our stateless widget, which is just a simple material app. And then we've got a stateful widget, which builds out an empty scaffold. Let's create a new file. We'll call it model.dart and we'll use this file to basically model our data. Here's what our data class will look like. So we're pulling from an API and we want to be able to serve a bunch of network photos into our grid view. So we want to pull in three fields, the ID, the title, and the URL. We'll create a basic constructor so that we can put these items in directly. And then we can create a factory constructor called photo from JSON, which takes in a map. This factory constructor allows us to pass in a decoded piece of JSON, which will be a Dart map. And then we can just take the ID, title, and URL out using these different keys. We want to create a new file. We'll call this photo underscore repo. And inside of this file, we're going to create an abstract class. And this will allow us to define the shape of the repositories that we're going to create. This way we can inject the repositories into our application based on very small changes that we can make to the front end. So by defining photo repositories, the application knows that it depends on a photo repo. And as long as it gets one photo repo, it should work. We'll make three imports. We want to import our model so that we can access the photo data type. And then we'll import HTTP so that we can access the HTTP client. And then we need Dart async so that we can output a future. So then inside of our abstract photo repo, we just want to define one single method, and this will be a method called fetch photos, which will take in the HTTP client and output a future list of photo. All right, so now that we have our abstract class defined, let's create our mock repository. So we'll create a new file called mock repo.dart. For this class, we need to make five imports. We need to import our model, we need to import our photo repo abstract class. We're also going to need Flutter Foundation so that we can actually communicate with an isolate, and we'll go into that in a moment. We need HTTP, and we'll 
alias this as HTTP, and then we also need Dart async. We'll have our class mock repo extend the photo repo class, and then we need to override the fetch photos method that we created in our abstract class. Before we finish building out this method, however, we want to create a function that allows us to generate a list of photographs for this mock data source. So this is mock data. It's not the data that we'd use in production. So what we're doing is we're taking from a website called placeimage.com and we can get images that are 640 by 480 and we're going to specify that we want technology based images and then afterwards we'll put in one of the numbers and this will iterate up from one all the way up to whatever x is with x being the number of photos that we want. So if we put in say 50 here, we'll get 50 photos and they won't actually be different photos because that's not how place img actually works. Instead place img just gives us a photograph from a pool of photographs and it can be the same photo. So to actually call on a different isolate than the main isolate which is running our application, we can use this function called compute. This comes from the Flutter Foundation library and we can call compute, we pass in a callback function and then we pass in a message. And the callback function in this case is our create photos function and then the message is 400, which will be the number that gets passed into our callback function for x. So what this will do is it will create a new isolate, then it will pass in the message, which is 400, into our create photos function, which will generate a list of photo objects. And then we'll return these as a future. And this is important because we want to actually interface with our items as futures. The main reason why this function is not inside of the class is because if we put it inside of the class, the compute function will not be able to run it. So this needs to be a quote unquote top level function for it to work as a callback function. All right, so now let's create our production repository. And our production repository will need the same dependencies that we had inside of our mock repository. So we'll need our model, our photo repo abstract class, we'll need the Flutter Foundation library, we'll need HTTP, and we'll need Dart Asynchronous. We want our production repo to extend the photo repository. And inside of this class, we'll create a static constant URL, which will point towards the API where we want to pull the photos from. Now we can override the fetch photos method and we can then of course fetch the photos from our URL. Now because we want to spawn and isolate for this particular class, we need to create another top level function. We'll call this function parse JSON and this will take in the response body from our HTTP response and then pass it into this map function which will map each piece of JSON to a new photo object and then put that into a list. So we'll use our photo from JSON factory constructor to do this and then this will pass back a list of photos. Now inside of our fetch photos function, we can get our response by awaiting on client.get on the URL and then we can spawn and isolate which will run the parse JSON function and the message that will pass to this function will be our response.body string. Now as I mentioned before when I was explaining isolates, they are asynchronous isolated processes. Now the main advantage of using isolates in this manner to parse the JSON and to get our photographs is because the JSON parsing is actually a fairly expensive function because it uses mirrors. And in fairly extreme cases, this could cause the application to drop frames or lose performance because it's making computations in the background on the same thread as our user interface. By splitting it off onto a separate thread, we don't have to worry about that potential problem. All right, so now that we have our mock repository and our production repository, we can create our dependency injector class. In this injector.dart file, we'll first create an enum 
data type, which will allow us to specify the specific type of data that we want to inject into our view. So if we pass through data type dot mock, then we'll pass in our mock repository. And if we pass through data type dot prod, then we'll pass through our production repository. We want to create an injector class inside of this function. And in here, we'll create a static variable, which will be of type data type. And then what we'll do is we'll have a static setter function, which will allow us to configure this data type. So if we just pass in the data type that we want, which could either be production or mock, this will then set this variable up for us. Now we want to make it so that our injector class is a singleton object. So we'll do this first by creating a static final injector inside of the injector class. We'll call this underscore singleton and we'll point it towards a constructor called injector dot underscore internal. Then we'll create this constructor down here and then we can create a factory constructor which will just take our injector object and return the singleton so that we can gain access to this singleton variable outside of this class. Now we can create a getter function for a photo repository type. And in here we can run a switch statement on the static data type variable that we've already passed into here. And this will allow us to then check to see which data type we've passed into this injector singleton and then get the repository out of it. If we pass in data type dot mock, we can get the mock repository out. And if we pass in any other data type, we can get the production repository out. In this way, our application will think that we're just using a photo repository object and it doesn't really care if it's mock repo or production repo. And we as the developer get to specify which repository we want to use in our front end. In our main.dart, we want to make three imports. We'll import our model, we'll import the injector, and then we'll import the HTTP library and we'll alias this as HTTP. Now before we go any further, now I just wanted to fix one error that I made. First of all, we need to import the photo repository class into our injector. And then I'm going to come back in here and change the enum to repo type instead of data type, just so that it's a bit more clear inside of our application. Now inside of our main function, we can call directly to our injector class. We can call the configure function and we can pass in a repository type that we want. So in this case, I want our application to start with the mock repository. So I'll pass in repo type dot mock. Now down inside of the state class of our stateful widget, we can create an injector variable and then we can initialize it using the init state function. So to initialize it, we just say injector equals injector, and this gets us the singleton object of injector. Keep in mind that a singleton object is an object that can only be instantiated once. This means that the configuration that we made up here is persistent down to the object down here. After initializing our injector, we can now create our user interface. We'll have a scaffold, which will have a simple app bar. And then the body for this scaffold will be a future builder, which will take in a list of photo. A future builder is a bit like a stream builder or any other type of builder inside of Flutter, except this time, rather than dealing with streams, we're dealing with futures directly. So we need to specify what future we want this future builder to look at. And we can create our future by calling our injector photo repo dot fetch photos and then passing in the HTTP client. And this will allow us to call both our mock and our production future without actually having to specify which one we're worried about. So because we've specified in the main function that we want to build based on our mock repo type, down here in our future builder, when we call this fetch photos function, it will call the mock repos version of this method. 
Now we can create our builder function which takes in the build context and then it takes in an asynchronous snapshot from the future. Inside of the builder we can check to see if our snapshot gives us back an error and if it does we can print that out by calling snapshot.error and then we can return a temporary operator that checks to see if our snapshot has data and if it does it builds out a photo grid widget which we'll create here and we pass our snapshot data as our photo list to this photo grid widget otherwise we can build out a center widget with a child that is a circular progress indicator which is just that spinning circle so this way when our future has data it will display the data and when it doesn't have data we'll just see a loading circle spinning around in the middle of the screen now we can create our photo grid widget this will be a stateless widget and we want this to have a list of photos attached to it. So we'll create a final list of photos called photos, and then we'll create a constructor for it. This will take in the key, and then it will take in this.photos, which we've passed in up here, and then we'll call super.key and key. Inside of the build method, we can return a gridview.builder. We need to specify a grid delegate for this grid view. And we can use the sliver grid view delegate with fixed cross axis count. This allows us to specify how many columns we want for this grid view. And we'll put in two. Then we need to specify the item count, which will be based on our photos.length. And then we'll create our item builder function, which will take in the context and then the index of each item as we're iterating through them. And we'll create a network image for each of our items. All right, so here's our application and we're running it with the mock data inside of it. So we've got all these photos and you can see that some of them are the same as I mentioned before. As we scroll down, we get more photographs and we should have about 400 different ones inside of here. If we go back into our application while this is all still running and we change this repo type into production, save it. This will reload with the old mock data, but now we can restart our application and you'll see that it will now reload with the new production data inside of it. I know this is a little weird that the production data is basically just empty photographs. That's because we're calling to an API that just serves filler photos. Now the photos fill out the screen a little bit better and there are I think 500 inside of this API so if we keep scrolling down we would eventually hit a bottom. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked the video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.